Hey, the long, hey, the long top tens here. As we have learned from the previous two world wars, global conflict can begin in very unlikely places. Now, for better or for worse, it has become all too clear that our modern global political orientation has made the fate of every nation more linked to the fate of other nations than ever before. Thus, in order to secure their own power, nations such as the US, China, and Russia continue to maintain a presence in some key strategic areas, often butt in hand with one another. Tensions in these areas, as well as others, are high, and some believe that these could be the places where World War III breaks out. So anyway, so these aren't the 10 hot spots, hot spots where global conflict could erupt. And hence, if you, if you are going there to any of these nations that I have, if you're going to any of these places mentioned on this list, don't. Because they're very dangerous and this could be where war breaks out, obviously. So, if you're heading on vacation tomorrow or so, or something like that, don't go to any of these places. Make sure. You cross these off of your list. Cancel your flights or something like that. Number 10. Syria. This is the most obvious one on the list. But as most are aware, um... Syria is in one of the most ugly civil wars of all time. This started in March 15, 2011, when protests against Syria's President Bash al-Assad and his crackdown on civil liberties escalate into a full-blown rebellion. Russia and Iran have backed up back to the regime while the U.S. is supporting the anti-government rebel forces. The war has not been raging for more than five years. That's right, five years, with a little headway be a man on either side. It has, however, created a massive humanit humanitarian crisis due to the hundreds of civilians being killed every month. As a result, Syrian refugees are fleeing by the thousands to escape the bloody conflict, creating a refugee crisis that has strained several nations. The situation is further complicated by the presence of the Islamic State, which um, has gained territory in Syria. President Trump has vowed to implement safe zones in Syria, which may include a no-fly zone. And if this no-fly zone were to be implanted, implemented, then Trump may give U.S. forces the authority to shoot down Russian planes that enter the zone. This could easily turn into World War III, if you don't really think about it. But it will, alright? Number 9, Israel. Since its founding in 1948, Israel has found no source of enemies. The small Jewish state is located between Egypt and Jordan on the Mediterranean Sea. Oh uh, well, that's surrounded by a number of Arab Muslim nations, which many of which harbor resentment toward Israel for a number of reasons. Many Arab nations contend that Israel has no right to the territory it's on. Other Arab nations have based their hatred on their theological differences. The result is that Israel has to have is have to fight an, its neighbors a number of times ahead of time. In recent years, Iran is one of Israel's oldest enemies. They have taken steps to obtain nuclear capabilities and possibly nuclear weapons, despite the deal. If Iran, well, if Iran obtain nuclear weapons, this would immediately threaten the national security of Israel. In response, Israel might attack Iran first. If this happened, or if Iran launched an attack on Israel, it would be very highly likely that war could break out, in which the U.S. and lots of other nations, including Russia, will be involved in. So, don't go to Israel, don't start a war with it. Number 8, the Persian Gulf. Now, obviously, the Persian Gulf has recently become a global hotspot on global tension. The, Ira the Iranian Navy has been conducting a series of productive man maneuvers around a number of U.S. warships in the Gulf. That's because Iran is enemies with U the United States of America, which in cases that's not good. So, however, the U.S. Navy has gone so as to fire warning shots at the Iranian vessels. Now, according to some top officials, these actions are part of an in intentional effort by the Iranians to heighten tr tensions in response to frustrations they feel over the ongoing sanctions placed upon them by the U.S. and others. One U.S. naval, naval commander said, This kind of provocative, harassing technique risks um, excavation and miscalculation. 
really, this could happen anytime soon. So please, if you're going to Iran, don't go over there. It's just corrupt. Think about it. Um, it's been more corrupt than what it's been back in 1979, when Iran was taken over by, um, who is his name? Rahala Khomeini, I think. Either way. So, let's go on to number seven, guys, with Kashmir. Now, Kashmir is actually the northernmost region of India. Well, however, Kashmir is predominantly Muslim, and many within the area contend that they should be part of the majority of Muslim nation of Pakistan instead of India, making things more tense. Alright, the region has been highly contested with an active separatist movement fighting against Indian control. Several terrorist groups have also become active in Kashmir and have frequently attacked the Indian government. In response, India has ramped up security forces in the area. At times, Pakistan has been harbored and possibly even supported many of these terrorist and separatist groups, which has inflamed the already continuous relationship between Pakistan and India. Border skirmishes between the two nations are not uncommon. The situation is complicated by the fact that India and Pakistan have nuclear bombs. It is certainly possible that war between the two countries could break out soon, starting in Kashmir, obviously. Similar, if a war did break out, it is possible that it could escalate to a nuclear level. This would demand attention from global powers such as China and the United States of America. Alright, anyway, let's go on to number 6 with the Korean Peninsula. This is quite obvious why we do not want you going over there, especially if you're going to North Korea, obviously. Um, U.S. is banning people from going over there. The only way to do it, go to Beijing, then go to Pyongyang. Actually, take a look. But, anyway, the Korean Peninsula has been drawn lots of attention from the international community due to the unpredictable and aggressive nature of North Korea's ruler, Kim Jong-un. On numerous occasions, North Korea has threatened war with South Korea and the, U and the United States. The United States and South Korea have responded to these threats by keeping a strong military presence in the area on standby. However, things could easily escalate should North Korea continue on its path to develop an, an intercontinental ballistic missile that could reach the U.S. and cause total destruct destruction to the U.S.A. However, if North Korea had this capability, they would hypothetically, uh, hypothetically be able to launch a nuclear strike at the U.S. There are some who contend that this very and real possible threat to the U.S. will force them into action if it need war. Similarly, a uh, recently appointed um, U.S. Defense Secretary James Math Mattis has stated that any attack by North Korea on Japan or South Korea would incur the full wrath of the U.S. military. However, under the tyrannical rule of Kim Jong-un, we, we cannot rule out anything. And there's remain a high risk that the Korean Peninsula could become the site of the next major global conflict. If you think about it. Number 5. South China Sea. Now, this place has been one of the most hotly contested regions in the world. Tensions have already risen over China's claim that's irrefutable. Uh, excuse me. Irrefutable. Um, I guess that's how you say it. Sovereignty over a number of disputed islands and seas surrounding them in the South China Sea. A number of other nations, including Vietnam, Japan, and Taiwan, have claimed that this is not the case. The South China Sea is strategically valuable due to its rich natural sources and the natural military advantage provided on its islands. The situation has only became tenser as China while well, built a number of man-made islands in the area and an air base on one of the pre-existing islands. Similarly, the Chinese have also deployed their first aircraft carrier to patrol the area. These territorial claims have not gone unchallenged, however, as the U.S. has maintained a strong military presence in the South China Sea as well. Some in Washington have made calls for military action if Chinese expansion in the region continues. It would seem that if a war were to break out between China and the U.S., immersing the world in what likely would be the next world war. It would begin in the South China Sea, if you think about it. Number four, Taiwan. Taiwan is 
Well, pretty obvious on this list, actually. Another point of major contention between the U.S. and China, the two most powerful um, nations in the world, in the world is Taiwan. Since China's civil war in the 1940s, China, Taiwan has been home to the exiled Chinese nationalist government. Although, for its intents and purposes, Taiwan functions as an independent nation, it is technically still under the control of the Chinese communists. The possibility that China may try to reclaim this rogue territory by force has always been present and has created an atmosphere of incredible tension. The stakes were always raised when the U.S. signed the Taiwan Relation Relations Act back in 1979, which brought Taiwan under America's protection. However, this did not stop the Chinese from exercising their power in the area. They have conducted a number of naval and air operations quite close to Taiwan, especially with the recent election of Donald Trump in his contact with Taiwan. Now, a violation of the One China policy. China will be looking to test the resolve of the new U.S. leader. It goes without saying that any move made by China on Taiwan will lead to a certain global conflict between the Chinese and the Americans. Now, the likes of which the world has never seen before. Yet, there remains a potential reality that both sides continue to prepare for, even to this day. Number 3, Latava. Now, according to Dr. Paul Miller, a national defense expert who predicted the anxiation of Crimea by Russia, the path to World War III begins in all of places, Latava. Now, for those who don't know, Latava is one of the Baltic states of Northern Europe, border Russia to the east, and the Baltic Sea to the west. This is obviously why it's made the list, because of Russia, alright? Now, don't blame me, whoever starts World War, with this uh, list. But I do want to tell you that Miller claims that Putin, after successfully anxiety Crimea, will, with relatively little, um, what was the word? What was the word I am looking for? Oh, that's right. With very little pushback, he has set his sights on Latava as his next target and will make a very aggressive move within the next two years, guys. But really, it's just going to make things more corrupt. So in scenario, in one scenario, the U.S. as a member of NATO will come to Latava's aid and engage Russia with the, assi the, with the assistance of other NATO nations. This is very likely what be the end of World War III. The international community would be wise to keep its eye on Latava for a long time. Number two, the Suaka Gap. If Russia were to attack Europe, its first move would be to capture the Suaka Gap. This is a 60 mile stretch of narrow land in northwest Poland, running along the border with uh, this place called Lithuania. It is a prime target for Russian aggression because it also connects the Russian Baltic enclave. A Kaliningrad and the Russian ally Belarius. The Russians have a strong military presence in both regions and could quickly deploy forces into the gap. If this occurred, the Baltic states, Estonia, Lithuania, and Latava would be cut off from their NATO allies and would be surrounded by Russian forces. One of the top US generals in Europe admits that the possibility of Russians capturing this strategically valuable gap keeps him up at night. Apparently, the Pentagon shares the general's fears as it's decided to quadruple its budget for European defense. Because all of Russia. Thank you. Number one, cyberspace. This is obviously the most obvious one on this list, just besides Syria and Latava. With the ever-evolving nature of technology, the ways we wage war must also change. In our modern-day world, has become a distinct possibility that the next global war could begin in cyberspace. Power plants, satellites, financial markets, military communications, and countless other things essential to our everyday lives lie on the internet. Therefore, we can all be infiltrated. We have already seen cyber warfare take place with the Russian hacking of the Democratic National Committee, the use of the virus Stuxnet against Iran, and numerous other instances. So, the US, Russia, and China are all continuing to develop their cyber capabilities and defenses. Just will look unclear. Right? 
Anyway guys, that is it for right now. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching, see you guys next time.